it's Tuesday in Tryon, North Carolina, and we uh, have a revival going on at First Baptist Church of Landrum. Last night, the uh, preacher preached from Mark chapter 5, verses 21 through 24, and verses 35 and 36, story of Jairus' daughter. You may remember the story. Uh, she was near death. Jairus came to Jesus, fell at his feet, and beseeched him to come, and knew that if he would touch his daughter, that uh, he would be, he, she would be healed. And we know that uh, Jesus said to him, "Do not fear, only believe." So I want to talk to you today about faith. Uh, we're we're in the book of James, and uh, we're talking about the testing of our faith. You say testing of our faith? Does God test us? Yes, he does. Uh, and sometimes he allows things to come into our life and sometimes he causes things to come into our life. Uh, I think it's important to remember that temptation is a form of testing, but God doesn't cause the temptation, but he may allow the temptation. And so we need to remember very clearly from 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13, that he'll never allow us to be tempted above that which we're able. And with every temptation, he'll always make a way of escape. Let me say that again for you. Uh, God can test us, and one of those testings can be temptation, but he himself does not tempt. He may allow temptation to come into our lives. But he promises this, that he'll never allow temptation to come into our lives that is more than what we can resist, and he'll always provide a way of escape. That's a very important principle in life. Now, in James chapter 4, verses 1 through 3, he tells us the source of our quarrels and our conflicts. Having just gotten off the phone, doing some counseling with a young couple, uh, I think it's important for us to remember that the source of our quarrels is called out clearly here in James 4, 1 through 3. It's our Adamic nature or our sinful nature. And that comes in ways that we can easily see. It comes out of selfishness. It comes out of lust. It comes out of envy. And it comes out of pride. Now, men have the greatest difficulty with pride. And uh, so it's very, very clear that that can be one of the ways that it comes into our lives. Lust, envy, pride, and selfishness. And we need to ask ourselves, are we guilty of any of those things that's causing quarrels and conflicts? In James chapter 4, verses 2 and 3, it tells us that if we have... Uh, excuse me, in verse 4, tells us if we have a friendship with the world, we have hostility towards God. And if we are friends with the world, we're enemies of God. Now, what does that tell to you about the world? Uh, the world will try to put a different value system on us, which will encourage selfishness, lust, envy, and pride. Uh, just the other night, I remarked as the commercials were playing, I think there were about three in a row. One was Hardy's Restaurant and another one was some kind of beer. But in each case, uh, there were scantily clad gals on the beach or in volleyball tournaments or whatever the case might have been uh, to work on the lust of man. And of course, the sandwich that they were selling was a jalapeno hamburger, uh, something that would also appeal more to men than to women. So Advertisers know the things of the world, and they know that selfishness and lust and envy and pride are the ways that uh, the world operates. And James very clearly tells us that a friendship with the world is hostility towards God, and if we're friends with the world, we're enemies of God. Now, there are three foes that we face in this life. The world, the devil, who cannot force us to do anything, but can certainly tempt us, and the flesh. <laughs> Guess which one is the most dangerous to all of us? The flesh. Uh, you see, we have an Adamic or a sinful nature. Uh, I tend to look quickly to the screen when those images flash on the screen. However, I remember one time a pastor, a very wise pastor, said you don't have to turn into a full-length motion picture uh, that flash of a picture that's on the screen. 
That is, you don't have to stare at those girls. You don't have to think about what it would be like to be with one of those girls. Uh, you, you can't prevent the fact that the image may flash on the screen, nor your natural nature to look, but you don't have to continue to stare. That was David's problem on the rooftop when he looked over at Bathsheba bathing on the other rooftop. So we see those three foes. We see our enemies of selfishness and lust and envy and pride. It would be shame if James would just tell us about those things and then not tell us uh, how to combat those things, but he does. It's found in chapter 4, verse 7. He says that we need to submit to God. We need to resist the devil. We need to draw near to God. And the devil will flee from us. He says we need to cleanse our hands. That is the things that we do. He says we need to purify our hearts. That means the things that we think and feel in our hearts. And when we do, we know that we will have the result, which is very clearly shown us there in James chapter 4 also. And that is it will result in joy in our hearts. It's not easy. There's a lot of the world around us. There's a strong Adamic nature in us even after we become Christians. We still struggle with selfishness. We struggle with lust. We struggle with envy and we struggle with pride. But that struggle can be overcome and we overcome it very clearly in James 4, 7 and 8 in submitting to God and resisting the devil and remembering the passage that I quoted to you from 1 Corinthians 10, 13 that God will not allow us to be tempted above which we're able and with every temptation provide a way of escape. When we're tempted, when we're tested, we need to draw near to God, resist the devil, and look for that way of escape. That's your thought for the day. God bless you and have a great day.